I've been using Procreate Dream since it was released about a month ago, and I've been using Blender Grease Pencil for about three years for 2D animation and some 3D work. I thought I'd take this opportunity to kind of go through the two of them and compare them in case someone out there is trying to figure out which application they would like to get started with for animation. I can't go over everything in this video, but I've chosen five areas that I think would be important to consider if you're thinking of one or the other. So hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe and let's get started. Before I get started, I wanted to provide a brief introduction to both applications in case someone out there is unfamiliar with them. So Procreate was created by the Australian company Savage Interactive and it was released in 2011. It is a complete drawing and painting studio exclusive to the iPad. Over the years, its updates have included the addition of some basic animation tools. Procreate Dreams, which was released in November 2023, aims to be a full-fledged animation studio. While it has some growing to do to fill that role, new functionality is being added quickly, so I would expect it to become fairly robust in a very short period of time. Grease Pencil is a 2D animation system within Blender, a 3D application. Blender was first released in 1995 and is provided through the Blender Foundation. Grease Pencil was introduced to Blender in 2008 as a simple annotation tool within Blender so users could include notes in the viewport. In 2019, Grease Pencil received a major overhaul and became a full-fledged 2D animation tool. Grease Pencil received another overhaul in 2023, Grease Pencil 3.0, which includes a full rewrite of the software to establish a solid foundation for the next decade of tools they plan to add. Now let's move on to the comparisons, and the first one I want to discuss is pricing. Procreate Dreams is currently $19.99 on the Apple App Store. This is a one-time fee and you'll receive all future updates for free. No subscriptions necessary. That's right, no subscriptions. So with that in mind, I'm scowling right now at Cinema 4D, ZBrush, Maya, the Adobe Creative Suite, Clip Studio Paint for iPad. I could keep going. I am not a fan of subscriptions. So while Procreate Dreams is $19.99, Blender is free. Completely free now and will be free forever due to the license under which it is released. So, based on price alone, Blender Grease Pencil wins this category. However, at $19.99 for Procreate Dreams, which includes all future updates, you can't go wrong with either program. You're getting a lot of functionality for that price in Procreate Dreams. So the next topic I want to discuss is the hardware necessary to run the applications, because this, like pricing, will also affect whether you can use the program or not. So Procreate Dreams is an iPad exclusive, and it was designed to work on as many iPad models as possible. However, there are limitations from iPad to iPad, such as the number of content tracks you can have in a scene, the number of video tracks you can use, and the size of the supported resolution. As an example, the 10th generation iPad can have 100 content tracks and one video track up to 4K. A first generation iPad Pro can support 50 tracks and one video up to 1080p, so the range is fairly wide. I'm using Procreate Dreams on a fourth generation iPad Pro, which supports 200 content tracks and one video up to 4K. So my iPad is around three to four years old and I've had no issues running Procreate Dreams. Now, unlike Procreate Dreams, Blender isn't available on the iPad. So you'll need a computer to run it. However, you can use it on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So it covers all the major operating systems. Concerning hardware you'll need to run it, Blender's minimum requirements are a 64-bit quad-core CPU, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and a graphics card with 2 gigabytes of VRAM that can support OpenGL 4.3. Now keep in mind, these are just the minimum requirements and will probably be fine for running Grease Pencil. However, to get the most out of Blender's more advanced features, such as complex sculpting, particles, or intense rendering, you may need to upgrade to a 64-bit 8-core CPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a graphics card with at least 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Now I'm running Blender on a Windows 10 PC with an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X, which is a 16 core processor and I have 64 gigabytes of RAM. I also have two video cards, an NVIDIA RTX 3080 and an NVIDIA GTX 1080. I'll probably upgrade my video cards in the future to get the most out of Blender's viewport rendering engines, but my computer seems to be running Blender just fine at the moment. And from a hardware perspective, I think Procreate Dreams wins this category if you wanna get started animating with one of these programs at the lowest price possible. At the time of this video, you can buy a new 11-inch iPad Pro for $799 and an Apple Pencil for $79. So you can start animating for around $965, including tax. However, I would recommend spending a little extra to get the 12.9-inch version of the iPad if I'm going to be using this as my primary animation hardware. To run Blender Grease Pencil, in addition to the computer, you'll need a monitor or two, a keyboard, a mouse, a drawing tablet, and possibly a few more accessories. So the price of entry for Blender is significantly higher. So the third topic I want to talk about is interfaces, and that can often determine whether you use a program or not just by the first time you open it, your impression of it. So I want to discuss that briefly so you'll know what to expect when you open these applications. Procreate Dreams is probably different from animation programs used in the past because it has been optimized for the iPad. 
It can seem simplistic at first glance, but you'll need to search for some of the hidden features and learn the gesture shortcuts to get the most out of it. Having worked with it since its release, I think the interface is well thought out. And while that could change as more features are added, based on Procreate's interface, I think Dreams will probably continue to be easy to use. Blender released an overhauled interface in version 2.8 that really simplified the viewport. Blender's viewport left something to be desired prior to this update. Now the tools and settings are much easier to access with a mouse, but to use the program efficiently, you'll want to learn a lot of keyboard shortcuts. Additionally, while at first glance Procreate Dreams can seem simplistic, Blender is the opposite. It can seem very complicated and intimidating when you first open it. This is because the 2D functionality was built within an existing 3D interface. So if you want to use the Blender Grease Pencil module, you'll need to not only learn where to find the Grease Pencil settings, but you also need to learn what you can ignore if you're only doing 2D animation, because there's a lot of the 3D settings visible while you're working in Blender. With that said, while it may seem difficult at first, I think Blender's interface can be easy to use if you spend some time with it. In my opinion, both programs have a learning curve, but I would have to lean towards giving Procreate Dreams the win on this one. While Blender's interface is, in my opinion, elegant and easy to use once you get used to it, it will take some time to become comfortable finding your way around it. So the fourth topic I'm going to talk about are the animation tools available in these applications. Now they both have your standard set of tools such as timelines and interpolation and keyframes and things like that. So I actually want to mention a few things that they have different from each other rather than what they have in common with other applications. At the time of this recording, Procreate Dreams is strictly a frame by frame animation tool. However, it does offer some drawing transform capabilities such as rotating, resizing, and the ability to adjust the anchor point of a drawing. However, it is still very limited. I think for simple animations, Procreate Dreams interface and intuitive workflow provides an excellent animation experience. However, you will run into a lot of limitations if you're used to a program with a more complex range of tools. The biggest benefit to animating in Blender is the ability to incorporate 3D elements inside the same program. No animation program that I know of seamlessly works well with both 2D and 3D elements. I will give Toon Boom Harmony an honorable mention here since it does offer 3D integration, however, you need a subscription to Autodesk Maya, which is the only 3D program it fully supports. I wish Blender would get the same integration in Toon Boom Harmony that Maya has, but I don't think that's coming anytime soon, if ever. In addition to frame-by-frame -frame animation functionality, Blender Grease Pencil also offers cutout or puppet character animation rigging capabilities through Bones, which is something Dreams doesn't currently offer, and I'm not certain that it is on the radar at the moment. So for this category, I think Blender Grease Pencil wins only because it had more time to develop a robust set of tools that you just can't get in Procreate Dreams at the moment. The last topic I want to talk about is the drawing experience in these programs, because that really determines whether I'm going to use the program or not. Because I do a lot of 2D animations, so if I don't enjoy the drawing experience, I'm probably not going to continue using the application. Dreams is a raster program, so drawings are created using pixels and based on the resolution of your file. Drawing in Dreams feels just as good as it does in Procreate. However, Dreams is currently suffering some fairly severe limitations, including the lack of selection tools, shape tools, and layer functionality. I think those capabilities will be coming sooner rather than later, but you'll have to wait a while longer before getting them. I also want to give props to Apple for creating the Apple Pencil. I think it provides a great drawing experience that rivals any Wacom pens I've used in the past, so that's definitely a plus for using Procreate Dreams. Concerning Blender, I really love the drawing experience it offers, which feels very natural to me. The downside is that it is a vector program, so unlike Procreate Dreams, erasing leaves a lot to be desired, because it involves erasing points instead of pixels. So shapes can change significantly based on which points you erase or how many points make up a shape. Blender does offer additional ways to adjust your shape beyond erasing, which includes selecting and moving points or revising a shape with sculpt tools. But again, for a natural experience, I still have an issue with this. Blender also offers some non-destructive workflows you won't see in other programs, such as being able to adjust colors at any time, although Toon Boom Harmony does offer that, and affecting your drawing with a wide range of modifiers. For a more natural drawing experience, I think I prefer Procreate Dreams. However, due to Dreams' limited features and the extensive functionality Blender offers, I think Blender gets the win here, but that is just the difference between Blender having a longer development time than Procreate Dreams, but I do think it will catch up. So to sum it up, which one would I recommend to other artists? Well, I think that depends on your needs. I think for portability, you can't beat Procreate Dreams. The ability to take an iPad anywhere you go and have such a great drawing experience with the Apple Pencil is hard to beat. Um, but from a usability standpoint, at least for now, because Procreate Dreams is going to continue to advance, I would probably choose Blender Grease Pencil because the functionality is mature and I think it offers a lot of tools that you can't get other places, especially if you're wanting to use 3D objects in a 2D setting.
So in my opinion, if you have a capable computer and you have an iPad or are considering getting an iPad, I would probably use both programs. I think they can work well together and the negatives they have, I think the other program, you know, helps fix those. So I will probably use Procreate to do rough animations and storyboarding and things like that and bring those animations into Blender Grease Pencil to polish up and finalize and maybe add effects depending on what you need done. Hope you found this video helpful. Um, my wife did mention that I needed to show more personality in my video, so hopefully I didn't overdo it in this one. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.